Dr. Temple Grandin, our medalist. Please, might you join me at the podium. <laughs> Dr. Temple Grandin, you argue that if autism were removed from the human gene pool, that we would be left standing in caves, chatting and socializing, but getting nothing done. Your outstanding accomplishments lend credence to this possibility. Yet we honor you today foremost for so generously sharing your story, your own story with the world. And in doing so, reshaping our understanding of autism and the greatness of human potential. In part, your message has been that if someone who did not speak until the age of four can be celebrated by the Times Magazine as one of the world's most influential people, there is great possibility for us all. You have underscored the rich variety of human intellect, reminding us that different is not less and so very often turns out to be more. Your hallmark has been your remarkable ability to imagine others' viewpoints, to identify strengths that society has overlooked, marginalized, or identified wrongly as deficits. You eloquently describe the difficulties that abstract concepts in algebra pose for some children, particularly those whose thinking is photorealistic visual, that great asset that enabled you to design a humane livestock restraint system that revolutionized the meat industry. As reflected in the wonderfully titled HBO movie, Temple Grandin, you hit upon your vision of cattle shoots that reduce stress by literally putting yourself in the animal's place to tap their natural behavioral instinct. Dr. Grandin, for you is named a school for students with autism. You inspire thousands of children and their families. Now, as our American education system serves an ever more diverse range of learners, your insights stand to benefit an even farther and broader audience. For your fearless and energetic campaign to recognize and realize the inherent gifts and great worth of all human beings, we proudly present you with Teachers College's Award for Distinguished Service. Well, I'm really honored, and I want to just uh, thank all the great teachers I had. I had a great speech teacher, my mother was a great t uh, teacher, and I had a wonderful science teacher. You know, kids that get labeled with the milder forms of autism have uneven skills. Some are visual thinkers, like me, couldn't do algebra. What saved me back in the 60s was finite math. That was the educational fad of the time. There's mathematical thinkers that have trouble with reading. I see too many of these little smart third graders being held back. They can do that college math book, they should have it. Then there's word thinkers. Now, we have to have evidence today, and in my new book, The Autistic Brain, I present the scientific evidence. There's been a lot of discussion about Common Core. I think you need to look at that as a destination, not tell good teachers how to get to that destination. And One of the worst things that's going on in the schools today is taking out all the skilled trades, taking out all the hands-on classes, art and music and things of this sort. Uh, in the hotel last night, I read the student's speech. 
But our two words kept coming up, pioneer and passion. How do students find their passions? I got interested in cattle because I was exposed to them in high school. Another child might get interested in music because he played a musical instrument in band. But if they take away band, then he doesn't find out he likes a musical instrument. You policymakers out there, please don't be abstract. You gotta get out of that office, get out in the field, find out what's actually going on. I'm seeing too many policymakers today that go, you know, kind of college, go right into a job inside Washington, D.C. They've never done a real job like teaching. The other thing I've learned from working in the construction industry is, you know, you got to design a project, you got to build it, you got to get it done, you got to make it work. It's kind of a project mentality. Also, I am a bottom up thinker. My concepts are formed with specific examples. So you want to reform schools? Let's do it one school at a time and then tell people how you did it. Another thing that I have found, I, when I was young, when I was your age, I thought I could fix everything with the right equipment. You've got to have the management to go with that equipment. That's equally important. And I want to just finish up. Who do you think built this cathedral? I'm going to bet you the cathedrals were built by a lot of kids that are in special ed today. The dyslexic kids, the ADHD kids, the mildly autistic kids. I'm looking at this beautiful window right now up there. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, somebody that was shy, not very social, you know, probably made that. You see, in the era of the cathedrals, uh, those talents were valued. I'm worried today about too many of these kids uh, going nowhere. We need skilled trades. Next time the subway floods, next time the substations drown, you're going to need that misfit to go in there and fix it. That's the sort of thing he needs to be doing. So I want you to think about that. You know, look at these windows and think about who made them. Uh, a lot of special ed kids working on that stuff. And today, too many of them are getting addicted to video games, and we just can't let them do that. Nope, we got to get out there. And you got to get them out there doing real stuff. Okay, thank you.